greet you all in the highly exalted, wonderful, precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to the whole Bible tour in three years. Turning our Bibles to Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2. When we see uh, the creation account written in Genesis chapter 1, we observe that God spoke and whatever he spoke, all that came to pass. So here we need to recognize throughout the creation account that the Lord ordained it to be and it happened the same way. So in this account of creation, we observe three very important things. The first thing is all that the Lord wanted had happened. Secondly, how the Lord wanted it to happen, it happened in the same way. And thirdly, the way the Lord had restrained it, it stopped at its place. So we see that creation was totally obedient to the Lord. And uh, whether it might be in time, whether it might be in space, or whether it might be in influence, all of them had limits. And uh, when we uh, see Genesis chapter 1 and verse uh, 1 and 2, uh, the Lord, uh, you know, formed from this formless earth, a wide earth, a dark earth. You see that the Holy Spirit God prepared the ground so that the word of the Lord could create what he intended. And after every day of God's creation, we see that the Lord saw that it was good. In other words, all the creation happened in order to please the Lord. So this was the relationship between the creator and creation. And uh, as we uh, go forward, we see that the Lord also created man. And the difference between man and the remaining creation was the Lord created all of the other things outside of himself. But when he came to create man, he created man in his own image in his own likeness. We can draw a few lessons from this creation account. When God was creating the trees, he spoke to the ground. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 11, let the land produce vegetation. So God put a connection between the trees and the land. And so when you pull out a tree from the land, then automatically its life reduces and it dies. The same way, God put a connection between the water and uh, the fish that swim in the water in verse 20. And uh, when the fish is pulled out of the water, then its life decreases and finally it dies. But in the same way, we see that when God created man, he created man in connection to himself because God was speaking to himself in order to create man. The triune God was communicating. And when God was speaking to himself, what it obviously suggests is that God has put a connection between man and himself. And so uh, we ought to recognize that when man is separated from God, he automatically dies. Man has been created in the image of God, in his own likeness. And uh, uh, man has been given great authority over all of the created world. And the reason is because God wanted to make his image dwell upon man. And man, with the power of this image, he had to rule over all that was there, whether it was fish of, of the sea, birds of the air, uh, livestock, over all the earth, over all the creatures that move along the ground. In Genesis 1.28, the Lord blesses man with this kind of special blessing. And uh, um, you know, man had to always stay in connection with the God who created him and his image would remain. If he was outside of the connection with this creator, creator God, then that image would not work. So he always had to be in connection with this God. And uh, uh, finally, 
uh, we, we, we continue to see uh, throughout the first chapter that at least 10 times the word and God said appears. God spoke. This word appears at least 10 times. And uh, we see as an extension to this, the power of God's word in Psalm 33 and verse 6, it says, By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, their starry hosts by the breath of his mouth. So we see that it is the word of the Lord that was the source for creation. You know, when God spoke, it happened. This is the power of the word of God. And the scripture says that in Psalm 33 and verse 6, that the starry host, that, that huge uh, uh, number of stars have been caused by his breath. We see the almighty power of God. And then going forward uh, in, in Psalm 33 and verse 9, it says, For he spoke and it came to be, he commanded and it stood firm. The energy of today's creation was in the voice, in the word of the Lord. When his heart desired something, his mind thought about it and his word spoke, you see, everything came into being. And not only came into being, the Bible goes on to say that it stood firm. Oh, the whole universe originates from who God is. And this is so very important for us to understand how this world gets its meaning. This world gets its meaning only by being obedient to God by being in a position where they have a motive to please God and by being in a state wherein they restrain themselves where God restrains. And uh, uh, going forward uh, in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3, the Bible says, By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. So, uh, you know, these theories of creation, it always says that out of something came something, but they, you, you find nowhere, nowhere any account of creation or evolution that the science says how something came in the first place. We don't get answers for this. How something came in the first place. It always starts with an assumption that there was something. But the Bible gives us a very clear explanation when it says that all that we see today has come out of what was not visible. It has come by the power of God. It has not come from some source, but it has come from the power of God. And that's the reason why we, we ought to give all credit to God. And when things go wrong, we need to come back to the Lord because he knows the root. And he alone can repair it to bring it back to its intended purpose. And uh, we also see that this God, this word that created the whole universe, this word in John chapter 1 verses 1 to 3, this word was with God. This word was God. And uh, we see that uh, this word with God and through this word only, Everything that has been created has been created. And obviously, we know that this word is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. And this Lord Jesus Christ, being, uh, uh, you know, the creator, being the force behind all of creation, not just for creation, in a Colossians chapter 1 and from verse 15 to 17, it says, um, the Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were in created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers, or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. So here, uh, the Bible is very clear by giving us the purpose for the creation of the whole world. And it says that God created everything for his own sake. It was created by him, for him, and through him. 
And so uh, the meaning uh, of all this creation around is just to show uh, the greatness and establish the purpose of the Lord Jesus. Our life's meaning is also the same. We are not created just for ourselves. We are created by God for his purpose. We are created in God to stay with him and to give him his place in our lives. We are created through God so that we give him all the praise and honor. And um, there is a second part uh, that we need to very carefully note because Today, in these days, we see that nations are coming together and slowly, slowly being uh, given in to the pressure of people, to the wickedness of people. The Bible very clearly says in Genesis chapter uh, 1 and uh, verse 27, it says, Male and female, he created them. The reason he created them male and female is given in verse 20. Eight, where he says, be fruitful and increase in number. God's purpose was that man should increase in number. The legacy of God's creation, the, the fulfillment of God's purpose might continue in man. And uh, uh, it, that was only possible by a relationship between a male and a female. And God created male and female so that both of them can reproduce and have children. But today we get to see that uh, uh, this basic, this basic intent of marriage is being obliterated by today's world. And uh, even in the New Testament, we see this clear definition that the Lord Jesus gives. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 19, verses 3 to 6. Some Pharisees came to him to test him. They asked, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any and every reason? Haven't you read, he replied, that at the beginning, the creator made them male and female and said, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. So here, the Lord is very clearly defining what biblical marriage is. And God created male and God created female so that both can consummate in marriage and continue um, you know, the human race. But today, we hear that the same-sex marriages are growing. Gay marriages on one side, lesbian marriages on one side, a transgender public, you know, who voluntarily allow to be transgender or bisexual. These kinds of obliteration of God's creation is, is slowly growing. And even this day as I'm speaking, almost 37 countries have uh, authoritatively endorsed same-sex marriage. And these were the days of Noah. These were uh, the days of, of sexual immorality during a lot. And uh, the Lord compares these days for the days of his coming. How careful we should be. We are in these last days. May we be very, very cautious with ourselves and especially our children so that this great institution of marriage that the Lord has kept so that the image of God in mankind will not be distorted, but it will be continuing and people will be born so that they can know Jesus as their savior and fulfill his purpose in this world. This is being obliterated as people slowly given to this kind of uh, same-sex marriages. May we always stand true to God's word, even, even if the whole world is against us, because these are signs about the Lord's coming. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful world out there, beautiful world that speaks about your glory. Thank you that you're so powerful, O oh Lord, but yet we have been unfaithful. Protect us from these kinds of distortion in the days to come. Protect our children and our generation. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.